get ready for IROS 2024, where the brightest minds in intelligent robots and systems are gathering in Abu Dhabi, UAE. This year's theme is Robotics for Sustainable Development. So attendees will explore how cutting-edge robots are helping to make our world a more sustainable place. And IROS TV is here to bring you front row access to the coolest innovations and the latest in intelligent robots and smart machines. Hello, lovely to see you. What's up? Welcome to Abu Dhabi National Exhibition Center and episode one of IROF TV 2024. Today we'll be taking a closer look at sustainable robots and robots in sustainability. Coming up, we'll kick things off with our deep dive into how medical robots can become more sustainable to transform healthcare for the future. These systems are developed to meet some really difficult challenges. They have to operate in very tight spaces, confined environments that are dynamic. They use lots of exotic materials sometimes in, in quite intricate combinations. And that makes it, it difficult to, to make something that is, say, affordable, uh, that's easy to be reprocessed and reused or even recycled. Plus, we'll chat with some of the conference attendees to find out what brought them to IROS 2024. We'll also meet some of the innovators building the future of robotics. But robotics started in, in 2021. Our ultimate goal is to bridge the gap between academia and uh, industry. As you can see, we've got an exciting show lined up. Stay tuned for our very first interview. You're watching iROS TV. all the action as we dive into Hot Topics exclusive interviews and lively discussions straight from the heart of the Abu Dhabi National Exhibition Centre. You can find the latest IROS TV episodes airing on the TVs placed throughout the Convention Centre on the homepage of the IROS Conference website and on all of our social media channels. So make sure you like and subscribe. Joining me now are Paolo Fiorini, CEO of Needle Eye Robotics, and James Chandler, an assistant professor in surgical robots at the University of Leeds. And we're here to discuss the sustainability of medical robots. Thank you both for joining us. If I can come to you first, Paolo, and why are medical robots not sustainable at the moment? Well, first of all, <coughs> we need to define what sustainability is. Uh, we have a different point of view, you know, it could be called uh, economic or more accessible or all or, or, or the above, you know. And, and the problem of medical robotics is that it's very expensive, not only the acquisition, but also the maintenance and the use of the machines. There are very few machines, uh, there is a monopoly, and, you know, we talk a lot about medical robotics, but if we look at the number of, in, of intervention done by, by robots, is a minimal part, it's like 0.1% of all the interventions. So the, the, the market is huge, and unless we overcome this issue of robotic barrier, too expensive, we will never reach all the, all the potential users. And James, you're educating the people of the future, so tell us about that from your perspective. How sustainable are they at the moment? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing to remember is that these systems are developed to meet some really difficult challenges. They have to operate in very tight spaces, confined environments that are dynamic and of course delicate. So in order to meet those kind of challenges, uh, often the designs are quite intricate, engineering pieces of uh, precision. Uh, they use lots of exotic materials sometimes in, in quite intricate combinations. And that makes it, it difficult to, to make something that is, say, affordable, uh, that's easy to be reprocessed and reused or even recycled. And you both mentioned price being a barrier in terms of usage. What are some of those barriers to make the robotics low cost, Paolo? As James was pointing out, it's a difficult design, uh, but also the certification and of course the clinical trials are very long and very expensive. My personal opinion is that cost is not part of the design parameters. So once we design these machines, cost is not an issue. So we are not addressing the possibility of designing 
with not low performing components, but economic perform, economic components that can be made to perform excellently. So it's, it's not part of the design. So it's, we have to look into a shift of mentality when we design these devices. And is that what you're working on, shifting that mentality to get low cost implemented from the very beginning, James? Yeah, ideally we want to be able to try and prove that we can make systems that are equivalent or better, uh, but using, uh, using components, using materials that are more cost effective or more affordable and offer a better path towards sustainability. Um, we have to also factor in the, the, the kind of economics of, of the problem as well. So unless you can develop a viable business model using a low cost medical robot, um, it's hard to see how it can actually make it to market and be a sustainable competitor to the existing uh, products out there. So we've talked about the barriers, let's talk about the benefits. So what could be some of the benefits we could gain from having sustainable medical robots? The main benefit is that we'll, we'll be able to satisfy the needs of a very, very broad population. You know, for instance, we are developing with, with our company a percutaneous system driven by a robot that will partially replace the expensive surgery. But not only the surgery, we replace the need of, of operating room, the need of trained personnel. So, it's, as I said, it's a whole approach to something that is more accessible to areas where these skills and these facilities are not available. And, and James, where do you see some of these benefits coming in, in terms of the sustainable robotics? Yeah, I think one of the main things is that if we can create, uh, very much echoing what Paolo says, if we can create more sustainable designs, but we can do it in such a way that they are more affordable. This means there's this potential there to have great health benefits and improve health uh, inequality in order to kind of meet some of the, the UN sustainable development goals uh, that exist. And hopefully we can do that by increasing access so more doctors and more patients have access to the benefits that can come from robotics. And Paolo, you mentioned you've come up with a new device or the company's coming up with a new device. Cost is one element, but are there any other barriers you see in terms of medical robotics? You've said the uptake or the use is so low in terms of percentage. Is it patients? Is it doctors? What's the problem? Many, many. You know, starting with the training, the availability of the personnel. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of expertise to use a robot, although it's, it's marketed, it's very easy to use, but it's not true. Uh, Basically, these are the barriers, uh, the, the lack of personnel that can, uh, but the whole team that can uh, handle the robot. Uh, making something that is not only economic, but economically maintaining and operating, need less people. For instance, uh, we are trying to shift from operating room to ambulatory procedures, where every physician can do it in his own office. And that, that will reduce the need of uh, anesthesiologist, uh, of uh, scrubbing, uh, all kind of things, and so it's, it's a whole chain of, of effect that we can we can uh, trigger by developing something that is more accessible. And and James, is this where you see the direction of the robotics being used from, say, the ambulance all the way to the operating theatres? I think there's a potential case for that. There, there will always be a, a strong presence in the hospital, um, but we can hope that we can produce some systems that are simple enough, that are portable enough, that could be used in different locations so that the benefit can be spread kind of further to patients in need. And would you say patients are quite sceptical at the moment? Uh, that's a, a sort of a balanced opinion. I think some are obviously fearful of when they hear the word robotics uh, implied, but others are more open-minded. And I think as, as we kind of get more used to robots being in our everyday lives, I think the perception will shift, um, but we'll have to see. Thank you both for joining us. Really insightful conversation. Thank you for your My time. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you very much. Innovation drives the future of intelligent robotics and systems. And we're here to spotlight the researchers who are shaking up the community. Let's dive into the cutting edge breakthroughs that are pushing the boundaries of what's possible in robotics. Let's head to Sweden now, where Vara Robotics is benefiting both PhD students and industry, as they bridge the academia to industry gap by providing the infrastructure and real-life industrial use cases to enhance robotics research. The robotics industry is facing new challenges. Vara Robotics started in, in 2021 and it brings together academic 
partners and industrial partners with us creating a dynamic ecosystem where industry and, and academia can work. There is a really good hardware setup, so it's nice to work with one of the leading industry partners in robotics. In our lab we have several robotic platforms. The students can test, validate and integrate their methods against challenging industrial use cases that are brought forward by our industrial partners. Being together like this makes it possible for us to bring in new technologies to our development pipeline. To look at the same topic of research from different angles, the innovation is created exactly there. The DKR IT team, part of Japan's AIRC, focuses on advancing AI research to foster innovation, safety and industrial competitiveness while promoting ethical AI use through initiatives like the My At Home Challenge, which involves AI reasoning in spatio-temporal tasks. My At Home or MAI At Home is a groundbreaking embodied AI competition where AI systems face the challenge of reasoning through multi-time spatial temporal QA tasks in a dynamic, everyday living environment. Virtual Home 2KG is a cutting-edge technology that generates multimodal spatial temporal nudge graphs from a daily activity simulator. Our mission is to contribute to build a better society through the advancement of AI research in collaboration with industry academia, and the government. We just believe that AI will expand human capability and enrich society, and that we will accelerate research and development that will open up the future of AI. We warmly invite and encourage anyone interested in pushing the boundaries of AI technologies to participate in this exciting competition. Now it's your turn. We're excited to chat with you, the attendees of IROS 2024, and find out where you've travelled from and what you've brought here to this year's events. Let's hear your stories. Uh, I want to see the most uh, interesting is uh, AGB or AMR. It's autonomous mobile robot. It's, uh, it is my major, so I'm interested in that. I've come to IROS to see uh, what uh, different SLAM algorithms uh, are made nowadays and uh, how they actually do it in the real life. I really want to explore more about robotics because right now I'm an 11th grader and I really want to know what I'm into, so I'm trying to explore my options. And I come here to IROS uh, and uh, we're going to show uh, the best motion uh, capture system there is uh, in the world. I think one of the main reasons is that here you can connect with people from your field, you can see what's going on also in other fields and then you can come back home with new ideas. That's a wrap for our first episode of IROF TV 2024. But don't worry, we'll be back tomorrow with more cutting-edge innovations in intelligent robots and systems. In the meantime, catch the show here at the Convention Centre or online. And don't forget to hit subscribe and follow IROF TV on social media to stay in the loop. See you tomorrow. IML was established to integrate robotics, nanotechnology, and medicine. Our core mission is to develop micro-robots and miniature soft devices for biomedical applications, such as target delivery and minimally invasive surgery. But robotics started in, in 2021, and it brings together academic partners. From the industrial partners, we have ABB, Ericsson and uh, Algorix. Our ultimate goal uh, in the end is to bridge the gap between academia and uh, industry.
DKRT's mission is to develop AI technologies that integrate data-driven and knowledge-driven AI to understand the semantics of human-like activities. My at Home, or MAI at Home, is a groundbreaking embodied AI competition where AI systems face the challenge of reasoning through multi-time spatial temporal QA tasks in a dynamic, everyday living environment.